Hello and welcome. In this session, we are going to learn how to deploy the PostgreSQL 13 in Azure VM. So we are directly going to start the demo and as usual, everything is being mentioned on a text, uh, text pad and we are going to follow the steps. So this is my Azure uh, portal wherein I'm going to uh, just uh, create a virtual machine. So just let me show you what all we are going to do. So we are going to launch an Azure VM with our HEL8. Uh, we will create it using the username and password. In the networking section, we will create a new security group. And our idea is to, we wanted to connect to that virtual machine from my local system. So two things will be required. One is uh, I need to open the port uh, number 22 for the SSH. And another is the way to access uh, PostgreSQL using uh, 5432, which is the default port. So let's get started. So I'm here in the home section of the virtual machine and let's go to virtual machine and simply just say create so i'm just going to create a virtual machine so this is the screen which is going to appear so for me it is pay as go resource group i have already created which is linux rg virtual machine name i will say pg13 and this is the region which is uh, I have pre-selected it. It is uh, uh, Asia region, and the image which I am going to use is uh, Linux 8.2. And this is the charge encode, and I'm going to use the user ID and the password. The username which I'm going to keep it, I'll, I'll make it over here. So the username we wanted to keep it for this demo, and this is going to be like this. So I'll just mention the username is this one and I wanted to keep the password some alphanumeric password according to the requirement like this. I've just copied and pasted the username and uh, password which is required to uh, create the virtual machine. And this is important in bound port rules. So this is very, very important to define like how you wanted uh, the uh, the uh, the access for the uh, ports particular ports if i say none just say allow or i'll just say okay let's go for the ssh22 and then we will create an additional networkings just go to disk um, we are going with the default options we are not going to select anything special Networking is something which is very, very important wherein you to need to mention which all uh, uh, ports you are going to access using your, uh, the, okay, let me, we'll go to the advanced, we will create a new uh, network security group. So this is only a uh, thing which is important for our demo. So we are going to access our, uh, machine uh, the, the virtual machine using port number 22 so you can see that uh, port number 22 is uh, open you can see the tick sign over here and i want one extra port for uh, postgresql so in the service section you just have to select postgresql i'm not restricting the particular ip address just for this demo which is very very disaster but let's let's do it just for this demo and we'll say add so there are two things. One is the SSH port open and another is uh, port number 5432 where uh, default PostgreSQL is running. I'll just say OK. And then go to management. Uh, next, you are not going to do anything extra from uh, here onwards. So it is all uh, the default values which we are going to create and it's just a very light weight system which we are going to create and on the there's the final uh, validation page where we will just say create this is going to take at least a minute or so so what we have done is we have uh, uh, selected a virtual machine of rhel8 uh, i think it is one uh, virtual cpu and one gb of ram uh, the username which we have given is Azure hyphen user. So instead of the private key, we are going to use the user ID and password. And I have given some 
temporary alphanumeric password in the networking section we have given something which is very very important you need to control the inbound security rules to the virtual machine for our case we have given two one is for the ssh another is for uh, postgre 5432 so once that is done we will be able to access the virtual machine and from there onwards we will log into the uh, to the system as usual and we will do these things one is we are going to uh, deploy PostgreSQL 13 so using uh, uh, DNF install we are going to download and uh, install PostgreSQL 13 we will initialize the database we will enable and restart it then uh, we have to disable the SC Linux so uh, in uh, etc sc linux config file there will be a value sc linux equal to disabled we need to change it and we have to uh, make it from uh, okay i think um, okay let me show you when it is available so the deployment is uh, still going on if we go to the home and if we go to the virtual machine the new one, the new virtual machine, its name I think I kept it PG13 or something like that. So you can see that there is a line which is still moving. That means the deployment is still in the progress. So we have to disable the SE Linux from uh, enabled to we will make it disabled. Then we have to make sure the firewall is disabled for this particular demo. And uh, when we install PostgreSQL on a Linux based operating system uh, using yum or DNF install, that time an operating system user, which is called as the service account for Postgre will also be created. We have to make sure that uh, we give the pseudo access to the Postgre service account so that it can uh, log in without switch, can, it can switch uh, to a sudo without password and it can perform some of the operations like uh, recycling the service which will be required in our case and let us see where it has reached till now uh, refresh it okay it has come up it is the one which we have created pg13 this is the host name and on the left hand side uh, we have some basic information on the right hand side it will show you the operating system the size uh, virtual uh, uh, this is public ip so we are going to log in through that so i have just copied it uh, this is my putty through which i'm going to log in so just say uh, mention the host name and deployment succeeded so it is it has just got succeeded so this should work now okay the user uh, which we have given during the deployment we wanted an admin user to be created like uh, this one so that's created and we wanted to uh, give some password so that we had uh, set during the installation itself and this is what we have done now what we are going to do we are going to follow this so we have given the user id we have given the password we are able to log into the uh, postgre virtual machine sorry the the host name of the machine was pg13 then here we are going to install postgre uh, using the these commands so they are we have done it at least hundred of times and we are just going to repeat it for the uh, azure virtual machine so i have just copied and pasted all the six commands in one shot and it is going to take at least a minute or so and once this is done we will be moving to the next step what, what are these steps? So you just say pseudo DNF. From where I have copied these steps? These steps I have copied from uh, PostgreSQL.org download Linux Red Hat section. So there I have selected Postgre 13 RHEL 8 and it has given me these commands. So I have just copied and pasted all these commands. This is going to be very very fast and within 30 seconds or uh, less than one minute this uh, deployment is going to be over for PostgreSQL. That in includes the uh, initialization of the database as well. So this is going on fast. 
our end motive is when the deployment is done we will make some necessary changes and we should be able to log in through the uh, pg admin uh, gui tool and we will be logging in from our system okay let's go fast It is doing the installation. Yes, yes, yes. There is a fast step which is going on the initialization of the database. The database has been started. So the next step which we are going to do, we can check one more step as well. We will say check the status. So instead of uh, so we'll say pseudo system CTL status PostgreSQL 13. And you can see that database, uh, the PostgreSQL cluster is running. So what next we have to do is we have to uh, go to SE Linux configuration file and we have to change it from uh, enforcing to disabled. So we will modify this value from enforcing to disabled. For demo purpose, uh, ensure that your uh, SLNX and they they are properly set the firewall otherwise there will be a problem connecting to PostgreSQL instance when you are trying to uh, uh, access it remotely okay so this has changed so we can check it again what is the SLNX status SC status that may sometimes require or that that is going to require your uh, reboot so now the next thing which we are going to do is we are going to stop and disable the firewall. So we are just going to check the status. If you say simply uh, system CTL status firewall D, it is going to show you the status. It is up and running. We need to stop and disable it. This is disabled. Just check the status again. The status is inactive, dead. So everything is fine. Move on to the next step. What we are going to do is uh, during the installation of uh, PostgreSQL instance, it has been done a, in a service account. PostgreSQL has been created as part of the installation. What we are going to do is we are going to enable sudo access for the operating system, which is the service account for PostgreSQL. We are just ensuring that when the uh, when uh, it has to use the uh, the super user privileges, it should not uh, ask for the password. So in sudoers, we are just adding one line: postgre all equal to all, no password equal to all. That means do not prompt for the password, ask for the password when you have to use the super user privileges. Now let's verify if you are, uh, if you can do the sudo, sudo su space minus postgre, you are able to log in and if you say, who am I? So it was logged in as uh, Azure user and now you have switched as the postgre user, you just say ID and you are able to see it over here. And what more thing you have to, you have to log in and change the password of the uh, Postgre database user. So we have uh, switched to the operating system user Postgre. Now we are trying to use PSQL command prompt. So we are logged in as the command prompt through PSQL. And now let's change the password of Postgre uh, user. So we are just going to change alter user postgre password is password. Just say du and you will be able to see you have a postgre. That's the only user available as of now. We haven't created any other that because that's not required. The other thing which we are going to do is by default postgre doesn't allow the remote connections. Just to ensure that it, it allows remote connection you have to change there is a parameter in postgresql.conf which is called as uh, listen underscore address make sure that you uh, provide the ip address of or the list, uh, list of ip address of your postgresql uh, operating system 
IPs. In our case, it is Azure Virtual Machine. Make sure you mention the IP address or list of the IP addresses. So what we are going to do over here, we'll just mention star in case we have more than one, then it is going to pick it, pick it up from there. Once it is done, let's restart the PostgreSQL services. We have restarted it, check the status, it is up and running. And using psql-u username hyphen h the host name, we are going to test it whether it is going to work or not. So we need to ensure that the IP address of in pg underscore hba.conf is mentioned. So you can see that uh, the uh, IP address is not mentioned. So we are just going to add it one more file, which is our pg underscore hba.conf. And there are some client IPs through which I'm going to log in. I'm going to uh, access it using that. So this is the way you, how you manage your uh, client authentication, like who, which IP address or range of IP address will be uh, able to access your uh, uh, your uh, Postgre. So this is where you mention it. And now we will try to uh, access Postgre using the psql-u postgre-h pg13. Let me recycle and reload if everything is fine. I just okay, let me check the status of Postgre. It is also fine. And now try psql-u. Okay, I have given the simple password. Uh, the password is just uh, password only. And we have been able to log in using the uh, the host name. So let's try. So everything is good so far. And now what we will do is. Uh, we will try to log in through the pg admin tool. So this is our pg admin tool. We'll go to server, just say create server, mention the uh, details and you should be able to log in if everything is fine. Just mention the IP address. In the connection section, you go and mention the host name or the IP address. In our case, it is uh, this is the public IP and we will mention the password of the Postgre database user. The database name is also Postgre, username is also Postgre. And just say save, okay, perfect. So our IP address was uh, 58. So this is, this is the one. Uh, so let's go back, just say PSQL, create database, PG13. This is the one which we are talking as of now, it has just one Postgre database only. And just to cross verify, we are logged into the correct database. Yes. We have PG13 database created. I'll just refresh it. So we have PG13 database, which we have just created. And this is this is all about it. So we'll just do a recap. What we have done is we have uh, spun up a, a post uh, Azure VM uh, RHEL8, uh, the uh, lightweight machine. Uh, we created a, we, uh, mentioned uh, master user or the super user at the operating system, which is Azure and uh, 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 hyphen user. We mentioned the IP password. And then the most important part was the networking part. We allowed the two ports. One is port number 22, another is 5432 for remote access on this particular port. Then we installed the PostgreSQL binary. We initialized the database. We disabled the SC Linux. We disabled the firewall. Then we uh, enable the pseudo access for Postgre database uh, OS user. Then we tried switching to that. It was successful. Then logging to the database, we changed the password of the Postgre uh, database user. 
and in postgresql.conf we ensured that the local host is removed with either the ip address or the list of the ip addresses and then we tried logging onto the same server using the host name which uh, reflected that the ip address of the host name should have been mentioned in the hba.conf that we have done and we have added the client ip address also so that we can connect remotely and when everything was successful, we launched uh, PG Admin 4. We mentioned the IP address of the server. The username was Postgre. The database name was also Postgre. And we uh, faded in the password and we were able to, to log in. So this is step by step how you launch a virtual machine in Azure, deploy PostgreSQL, and how do you connect it. It is very, very uh, 